Happy New Year, everybody. I hope everybody woke up today ready to get 2023 started on the right foot. I hope you're all ready to kick this year in the pants. I have a feeling it's going to be a crazy year uh, where we're moments away from Skynet taking over. So buckle up. But in the meantime, I'm still here to give you the best possible training content that I can. And as promised, I'm going to start you guys off with a full breakdown of the Kong program. It is now available absolutely free on the Boost Camp app. You are more than welcome to go there, download the app, punch in your numbers and go to town. You can also copy what I'm about to give you uh, right here. We're about to go through the entire spreadsheet, break down the movements, break down the rep progressions, what you should be experiencing every moment along the way on this program. And as promised, I have the Kong ebook that's going to drop in the next 24 hours. So go ahead and check back if it hasn't dropped by the time you viewed this. And there will be a link in the description and in a pinned comment post. The ebook is going to get into the principles. It's pretty meaty. It, I meant it to be like a 10 to 15 page introduction to the program. It's at like 75 pages right now, and it's going to be longer. It's going to go for 19 bucks. And I tried really hard to make sure you guys get your values worth. So if you want to see some different variations, if you want some ramblings and musings about the state of training culture, and if you want a firm breakdown of the things that make a nasty developmental size and strength program, go ahead and check out the Kong ebook. Before we get into this breakdown, I have some very big news. You might have noticed that I have been decked head to toe in barbell apparel for the last two weeks, and I'm not going to be wearing anything else because I am now officially, officially a barbell apparel sponsored athlete. I am in extremely good company with the team of content creators and athletes that Barbell Apparel has partnered up with. Olympic runner Nick Simons, Martins Lesis, friend of the channel Zach Tellender. Uh, they have some really good figures representing their brand, and I'm very happy to be associated with them. I also really like their clothing. Since I've started doing ads in the last year or so, I've actually had to turn down some ads because it's really important to me that I only bring to you guys products that I use, that I believe in, that I think are worthwhile. You will never see a branch chain amino acid promo on this channel. And it might even be recommendations that don't have anything to do with lifting just because I like it. I mean, that's what the skull shaver and the Nespresso advertisement was. But I am extremely happy to be part of the Barbell Apparel team. It's the most comfortable clothing that I have ever worn. I mean, historically, I would just wear my raggedy old basketball shorts and my old contest t-shirts because that's what was comfortable. And I could go back and forth between filming and training and there was no problem. Now I can do the exact same thing, but I actually look like I have gainful employment. I picked up some gear for my wife as well. Her exact words were that it was just like Lululemon, but just not as pretentious. So of course they're known for their stretchy jeans, which fit my legs and ass better than anything I have ever put on. I mean, I could do a full squat or strongman workout in the jeans. And actually I plan on doing that and filming that in the near future, but also their shorts, their dress pants. I got dress shirts from them. They have graphic tees, they have tank tops. They have such an amazing lineup of clothing. I strongly recommend you guys check them out. Barbellapparel.com slash Bromley for 10% off the best training gear on the market. All right, that's enough shilling. Let's get down to it. So whenever I write a program that's meant to be given to a lot of people, I try to keep in mind the problems that most people are likely to encounter in their training. And Kong definitely had that in mind. I've done the strength progressions in the past. Everything you found in base strength, peak strength, superior deadlift, available at barbellempirestore.com. All covered pretty thoroughly the strength progressions I like to use when I'm in a long kind of generic off season where I just need to basically get stronger or even when I'm in a contest prep and I'm trying to plan my very heavy attempts so that I can peak right at the exact right time. Most training, especially early on, and this is the training that I did before I got to where I am now, should be broad and developmental. It should have a variety of rep ranges. There should be a lot of effort. Sure, the main list should be a staple, but I don't believe that you are best off jumping into specialization early on. I've talked about this at length. So I wrote Kong as kind of an anti-specialization program, and it's inspired by a lot of the programs of some of the biggest and strongest dudes on the planet. This isn't just me trying to get you to uh, join a CrossFit gym and start doing Pilates and uh, go on a week-long fast. I want you guys big. I want you strong. I want you capable. And to do that, I strongly believe you should be doing a wide variety of movements and a lot of stuff that basically looks like bodybuilding work. So I wrote about this extensively in Kong. I cited guys like Kazmaier and Doug Young and Roger Estep, some of the strongest, most jacked dudes on the planet. And their training was just dense with all kinds of work, a huge variety of rep ranges, and a lot of stuff that's honestly just very hard. Squatting and deadlifting in the same workout for sets of 8, 10, or 12. 
pyramids that start you out with high reps before you even get to the heavy work or even workouts where you do the main compound movements after you've done a bunch of priming exercises before to address weak points and fatigue you before you get to that heavy work. A lot of these things that you might be inclined to avoid because you think they're not strength specific are the exact things that are going to take your physique and your strength to the next level. And this is actually pretty much in line with what I was running over the last couple of months. I finished my prep for Worlds. Unfortunately, I couldn't go because I caught the virus. But after that, and this is usually what I do after a big push towards one singular performance. After that, I like to clear out, take a step back and try to enjoy training again. And that's usually by doing movements I haven't done in a long time, different splits I haven't done in a long time, reps I haven't done in a long time. And I actually go in just trying to exhaust myself, but in kind of a fun and organic way. And this reflects a lot of what I was doing there. So let's get started. This program is broken into three, four week phases. So it's 12 weeks total. The first phase is, of course, the base building phase, an introductory phase. This is what kicks off the program, gets you initiated into these reps that most of you likely are not used to. So it starts with a bodybuilding split, and I went out of my way to put weak points first. Now, these are weak points that I particularly struggle with, but I also think that there are weak points that most of you are likely to struggle with because the way you make these particular muscles stronger generally requires focus isolation work. And it's the type of focused isolation work that is generally likely to be skipped at the end of the workout. It usually comes after the big movements. So it's really likely that if you're just doing a lot of squatting, benching, and deadlifting with minimal accessory work, or you're not taking accessory work as seriously, that the muscles around your torso are going to grow a bit. Your shoulders, your chest, your glutes, the extremities generally have a hard time growing. When you do develop weak points, it tends to be in the extremities. So I wrote this program as kind of a catch-all for those types of groups. So right here, we have the basic split for block one, five days of work, triceps, delts, and pecs, glutes, hams, and quads. Then we're back delts and buys, glutes, hams, and quads again, and then buys back and tries. So the upper body work, you see that there's a lot of rotation. So it's not just one split done repeatedly. You hit the same muscle groups multiple times throughout the week, but it's in different orders. So one day it might take a priority, other day it might take a back seat. So the point of this is to get your toe in the water with these rep ranges and to get you well-rounded, to help bring up some of these weak points, to give some attention to areas that likely got put on the back burner. So day one, the first upper body day, we're looking at triceps, delts, and pecs in that order. So jam presses, French presses, V-handle press downs. These are some of my favorite go-tos. And of course, there's room for variation here, and that will be outlined a little more thoroughly in the Kong ebook. And then we're going into shoulders after the tricep work. So front raises and upright rows, and then we're doing chest work, barbell incline, machine chest press, and cable crossover. And you are going to be devastated by the time you get there because the working weight is going to be so much lower than what you're normally used to, and that's perfectly okay. The fatigue is a point. You have to adapt to the fatigue. You have to get capacity. You have to get a motor before you can really start hammering away with those high volume workouts where you're in a more kind of hypertrophy and strength specific range. So the progression, and it's gonna be similar for all of the programs, two sets of 15 on most everything. A few exercises will have sets of 12, a few will have sets of 20. Most everything starts out just a couple sets of 15. And if that looks like it's not a lot of work, trust me when I say that the number of exercises done for those reps across that you're not used to is going to be extremely hard, especially if you're putting any amount of effort in. I have you start with the effort a little bit back on week one, and then it progresses by adding sets so we go to three sets in week two, volume immediately increases by 50%. Week three, we increase to four sets on some of the exercises and we're ramping RPE. So we're going RPE five, seven, and then two sets of 10. So it gives you time to work up. And those 10 RPEs are going to be hard sets that are right up, if not two and beyond failure. Week four finishes as the hardest week. You drop reps on some of the things. So now you're getting heavier. Now you're in tens and twelves. Same thing, ramping up over the sets into something easy-ish into medium into a few very hard sets and this compounds. Now the funny thing is this kind of dances the line between high volume and high intensity. I count it as high volume because it's higher rep, a lot of exercises, a lot of repeating sets, but you're going to find that a lot of the high intensity nut jobs actually kind of train like this because if you're ramping up and you're leading to one or two all out sets and you're doing that over multiple exercises, you might only count the RP sets as work sets all of the other sets ramping up, they still contribute. Whether you want to accept that or not, they still very much contribute. So in practice, 
this training might not actually look that different than what your typical high intensity bro does. So getting into day two, our first lower body day, hamstring curls, Romanian deadlifts, so we're doing hams first, leg presses, then walking lunges, and lastly, leg extension. So we're giving the hamstrings the posterior priority here. And the idea is that by getting those hammies to thicken out a little bit, getting them to tolerate some work, by the time we start hitting those heavier deadlift exercises later in the program, you're just gonna be on a different level. Your hip extension should be just a lot more aggressive. You should be faster off the floor. You should be noticing that you have more of a motor before those reps really start to die off on those high rep deadlift sets. Going into day three, now we're back, delts and biceps in that order. So now we're starting out with a pressing movement. Behind the neck press, one of my favorite movements. If you have shoulder issues, there are substitutes you can do, but I am a fan of behind the neck presses as long as you have enough mobility and basic amount of coordination that you don't snap up your rotator cuff. But for most people, it's not a problem. Very overblown exercise as far as risk to reward. One arm lateral raises with cable, nice cable machine, accessory after a heavy barbell movement. And then we're going into dumbbell rows, lat pull downs, and then biceps, hammer curls, and 21s. You know, a little throwback to some of our high school training when all we had was Arnold's bodybuilding encyclopedia. Same exact progression, starting at RP7 for a couple sets of 15 and then ramping up the exact same way, always leaving room in the tank so we can increase something next week. We increase sets, we increase effort. By the end, we're dropping reps, increasing weight. So everything just goes up, up, up. Second lower body day. Now we're starting with leg extension. So the quads are coming first. Going into barbell squatting. If you haven't barbell squatted after doing leg extensions, all I can say is I'm sorry because this is gonna suck. But you gotta risk it for the biscuit. It's absolutely gonna be worth it. So I recommend you suck it up and get through it because it does get easier every week and it will add something to your quads, which is going to only help your squat and your deadlift. Weighted back extension, single leg presses, and hamstring curls. So even on similar exercises, we're rotating. Like leg presses, I'll alternate between regular leg presses and unilateral raises. We're alternating between different types of delt raises, different types of tricep work. So I like the variety here for what we're trying to do, broad and varied. This is how we're going to shore up all of those weak areas that persist when we just do the same few exercises over and over and over. Lastly, our third upper body day, buys, back, and tries in that order. Barbell curls, alternating dumbbell curls, concentration curls. Then we're going into cable rows, high machine rows, followed by dips and rope press downs. And even the dips at the end are going to be harder because that's another movement that many of you are inclined to put early. Usually we press first if we're doing pressing and rowing on the same day. Usually we're doing compound pressing movements like barbell presses, overhead presses, and dips earlier when we're a bit stronger because we like to perform on those types of movements. This is developmental. So on that, you're gonna use as much band assistance or resistance as you need to get in the pocket right there. And again, progression runs the exact same way. By the end of this, you should notice that your weaker areas, triceps, hamstrings, the, the muscles that tend to lag, that tend to hold back your main movements, are going to be stronger. You're going to feel better. By the time you're getting to those sets in, of 10 and 12 at the end, you should be handling a lot of weight and you should be getting a little more full in those areas. Four weeks of a dedicated progression with a calorie surplus, resting and hammering the hell out of these exercises is more than enough to see a tangible amount of improvement in those muscles. So then we're gonna take that, roll right into block two. Block two, starts with a different progression. We're moving into pyramids, which I'm a big fan of, and I've talked about them recently. A pyramid starting with high reps and then dropping reps as you go, and the effort should be kind of static. We're not doing sets of 12, 10, 8, it's just warm-ups with the bar. We're doing it with enough weight to cause fatigue so that by the time we get to our top set of five or top set of three, we're actually fatigued and strength, like neurological efficiency and our ability to produce the most amount of force, that's not really the limiting factor kind of general fatigue is. So we're still pushing against that. Much higher volume than just doing repeating sets of three or five. And again, we're progressing week to week, always leaving something to improve. So 12, 10, 8, 5 on the main lift, finishing with an all-out set of 12. Then we go to 10, 8, 5, 3, finishing with an all-out set of 12. So that shifted forward a couple reps, a bit heavier. Weeks three and four, we're now adding sets. So now we are on six sets across. 10, 8, 5, 3, 8, 12. So doing an extra set on the way down and repeating week four with more effort, more weight that we can muster. The accessories are a bit easier to follow, 12, 10, 8 on just about everything, and that progresses forward, again, adding sets towards the end, 
and again ticking forward so it's just a bit heavier. Now the splits are a little bit more focused and we're doing the strength specific work first, the compound barbell movements first. So we're gonna be a little fresher. So with the capacity we got from block one, now we can apply some strength, we can put some mustard on it. So now we're doing seated military presses for our heavy progression, followed by dumbbell shoulder presses and dumbbell lateral raises. Your shoulders should be in a next level. Your shoulders should be like next level smoked at this point because you're doing them first so you can handle more weight. And that in and of itself should be a really big stimulus, a big change from block one. Then we go into dips, skull crushers, and press downs. Going into day two, we're starting with stiff-legged deadlifts. Notice that the main movements, the first exercise, are all uh, disadvantaged developmental movements. These are things that involve more range, that are a little bit harder, a little more awkward, and that is by design. We go to overload movements in block three. Uh, weighted back extensions, leg extensions, Bulgarian split squats, leg presses and hamstring curls. So now the isolation stuff, the hamstring work is coming towards the end. Day three, we're doing our rows, bent barbell rows, dumbbell pullovers into preacher curls, alternating dumbbell curls and cable curls. Day four, starting with close grip bench. Again, disadvantage. We're disadvantaging that elbow joint, taking care of our triceps, but in the context of a bench press. Into a bench press variation, chest isolation work, seated dip machines, and a two-hand dumbbell tricep extension to finish off your triceps. And day five, high bar close stance squat. Again, wide range of motion, feet close together, a lot of activation in the quads, a lot of knee flexion there. In the machine hack squats, step ups, dumbbell RDLs, and weighted back extensions. That is a monster program by itself, but we're not done yet. We gotta progress forward one more time because it's not a program unless it finishes with some heavy ass top sets so day one, we are now going into our overloaded movements. Same basic split, push presses on day one. You can use a lot of weight if you use your legs. Uh, day two, an elevated deadlift, 13 inch deadlift. Again, short range of motion, more load. Still a good developmental workout in its own right. And then pendlay rows, wide bench presses, and low bar wide stance squats. All movement variations that are made by design for you to handle as much weight as possible. The progression for the main lift, we're now doing a reverse pyramid, but with some stops on the way. This is kind of reminiscent of what Paul Carter put in his uh, base building book. Uh, and I really like this approach to training, hitting a top set for weight, dropping back, doing a few medium rep volume sets, and then finishing with an AMRAP at the end. So top five into a few eights, into a set of 15, relatively light RPE, so everything's a little easy. And this is all auto-regulated. You gotta know where you are on any given day and aim to jump weight with the increases in RPE. Uh, week two, it's just a heavier RPE, higher RPE at the same progression. And then we go to RPE eight again. Now we're doing threes, sixes, and twelves. And then we finally finish with a single three sixes and a set of 10 at RPE nine. So really pushing the envelope there. The progression for the accessory, pretty straightforward. We're doing this reverse pyramid, five, eight, 12, 15. And that progresses with the RPE the entire way. And then a few of the last exercises are really just set to cross. So that is the Kong program. So that is the Kong program. If you are not used to training in these thresholds, I guarantee you that you are going to see rapid growth in size. And by the time you get to these weights at the end, if you're following the program diligently, you're following the RPEs, you're paying attention to your recovery, your rate of progression. And if you're not trying to like do a cut while you do this, you should notice dramatic increases in size and strength. Go to Boost Camp to download it. Look for the Kong ebook in the next 24 hours. Once again, check back here. There will be a link in the description and in a pinned comment post. Thanks again to Barbell Apparel for sponsoring this video. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.